Hi, this is Eric here, and in this tutorial we're going to be going through your invoicing setup. Now, one thing that's interesting with invoicing is that there's so many different configurations. So, for example, some people want to have a description, a quantity, units, unit price, and an ex extended price. Some people just want a description and a price. Some people want to ha have their prices including GST and some people want it excluding GST. Some people want a discount column only for certain customers and there's just so many combinations. So what we've done is we've made it so that for the cash book it's really flexible and so the first thing to look at is up here the column options and you'll see a whole lot of tick boxes and when you change any of these tick boxes you'll see it change down the bottom. So for example, if I want to use product codes for stock control, then I can turn that on and then I can select a product code. Just while we're on that topic, you can also search for product codes using the Binox and search for something. We can also search for something in there and you can actually do a search C-A-R if you've got a huge list and it's everything with C-R in it so carpet and that's added that so there you go so that's your product codes if I go back to the option screen let's just turn that off and here we've got the cost center uh, some people want to have a cost center for each product so that they can track the profitability of each cost center and that's only for your own internal use. I'll turn the quantity column off and usually you need to turn the units off at the same time. And if the quantity column's on you can have formulas like so for example if you sell glass and you turn the formula thing on then we can have glass uh, 1.8 by 0.9 And there it's worked out the uh, cost of a sheet of glass where it's sold uh, by area. Okay, so let's delete that because we don't want formulas for the rest of the demo. And you can make it show the cost price so that if you can work out the profit of a particular invoice and you can show a discount column so there's a discount column then you can decide whether the line items include GST or exclude GST so uh, that's for all these line items if I tick it you'll see these prices change there you go and you can also make it so you show the GST rate for each invoice so there's a GST rate you can for example set this one to zero if if that one has zero percent GST so that's all the different options and when you have the option that you think you're going to use the most often then click set as default and it'll use that for the creation of all new invoices Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is this customizable field over here. So you'll see that this is in like a dotted box. And you can make this say anything you want. So for example, if I wanted to say something like subcontractor. And then I can type in the subcontractor Joe Soap.
then you can use that and then when you preview it, it says subcontractor Joe Soap it's got all the other fields and if I click on the little magnifying glass you can add multiple lines so and preview and there you go so it's added multiple lines so that adds a bit of flexibility and you can make it so that the default text in here is set in the screen that we're going to next okay so just remember it used to say work done for which is the default but we overrode it to say subcontractor and now if we jump out and go to the invoicing statement setup then that's where you put the default value for all new invoices and over here we've got your invoice terms or payment terms and this is the formula so for working out when it's overdue and this is the text that it uses at the bottom of the invoice that's the next invoice number do you want to show the GST or ABN number if you're Australia G GST number over there do you want to show payments on the statements and here we can configure your payment terms which I'm going to do using a different part of the menu now okay so next we'll have look at the invoice footer text now if I just click on a preview there's two places where you can put footer text there's footer text that goes down there immediately after the invoice and there's footer text which comes after a horizontal line which goes right at the bottom now in here I'm just going to do the top one first so I'm just going to get an example from help so this is a Remelpa clause where you say it belongs to us until it's paid for and get the other text so now if we look at it there it's added these two lines oops these two lines over here and for what we normally use for payment terms that's the next one down there it says pay blah 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 this bank this bank account number put the invoice number in the ref and so on so that's for that text down there so that's basically it for your invoicing setup and in the next tutorial we'll be going through the setup for emailing invoices and statements okay see ya cheers bye